Well, I will, but well, only the second half. What? Then they put it on the screen. Oh, okay. well, actually, I don't even need the screen. I just need it pointing in the right direction. Is that cool? Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. And then you know where it is. Just yeah, because I try to use that with that, and it doesn't come out well. And I'll bring the screen down. Do you have the other thing set up for me? The PDF? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, thank you. But you want me to still reach outside of Derek? How are you? Skinny, baby. You look great. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone, to Down to Dirty Discipline Clinic. Now, just want to start this off saying KWRI is version of the Discipline Clinic takes a whole day. So I'm scrunching this as much as I can. I'm leaving a lot out. But I found a lot of it is more than necessary than most agents need. So I'm going to keep this down and dirty. Okay. But the first thing you need to always start with is a big why. Okay. I have never seen anyone achieve greatness without knowing what they want in life, something that gets them up in the morning to do something. So think about, um, I want you guys to take a second and think about what. What's your big why? Why do you get up in the morning? Now, I know we all say it's your, my kid, my family, blah, blah. But I know you, you personally have something that you want to achieve. And it doesn't even have to be, I don't care if it's way out there. It doesn't have to be like retirement. It could even be, I want to, you know, if I got this, John, I can't see that far. If I had this in two years, it'd be off. If I live like this. So think about how, where you are now and where you want to be. What does it look like? What kind of income does it take to be in that lifestyle? What are you doing? What are you paying for? Where are you living? What does that look like to you? So, big why. Now, we can spend a lot more time on this, but I need to get it pretty clear to you. You need to give yourself a reason to show up every day and do the things you need to do. 
right? And if you're not having success the way you want it to, and right now it might just because you don't have something in front of you that's getting you up in the morning, moving you forward on what you want to do, you need to do it right. So it all starts with the vision. So I can start with my, um, I, my wife and I got serious about four or five years ago. Obviously, we have our kids, but really we were talking about retirement for us. I mean, we got pretty far. I'm a very forward thinking guy. So I was thinking of retirement. And I was thinking, what do I want to do? My wife says, I want to be retired. I, I want I want to be a real estate sales. Now, as you can tell, I don't want to do sales. I like to slow it down a little bit. <laughs> so what does that look like? Like I would like to be an owner, maybe do training, right? Maybe brokering, right? But it's going to be something that I want to do, real estate. But I need other income to make this happen, right? Like this may not bring enough. Money. So, okay, great. And if I'm going to do this, an owner, I mean, I want to be a what I like is buying. I like opportunity. So I want to be able to participate. I want to be able to. Some people say I want to buy more rentals, or I want to buy these brokerages. Well, then I want opportunity. And then also, where do I want to live? I want to live. Uh, we're talking about spending part time. I mean, I just vacation down to Palm Springs. We're talking about. Part time Palm Springs. I like it there in the winter, and maybe sack and sack the rest of the time. Right? So, what it would take to do that? And if you're older, well, we have to worry about health care because we're all in uh, real estate, right? So, we're paying for our own health care, right? So, we have to figure out all that. So, so, my wife and I, we did a, we did a, and then we, and, and then we factored in inflation too. <laughs> And then we came to, and I determined I want somewhere. And this is just me. I would like, I would like to get to a point where I can get a million dollars a year in income passively. Now that's a big number. That's a big number. So you don't have to be there. I know a guy right now. He's getting about forty to sixty k passively a year. Super happy. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> Super happy. Could live that life no problem. So I, it doesn't matter about business. No, you're fine. I'm just, it was down. Yeah, but what I need you to understand is you need to get clear on this. What's this look like? What's that lifestyle look like? What are you trying to do? And I, I took mine far out just because I'm a very goal oriented guy, but it doesn't have to be there. It could, I recommend three to five years max. If you, if you want it. Honestly, you can do anything you achieve in three to five years, no problem. So when you, if you have something in your mind, it gets, I find it gets a little cloudy after three to five years. I mean, it's a little kind of it's a Disney vacation. <laughs> well, shouldn't you kind of redo it every year? You should redo it every year. I, 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 revisit, I revisit all the time. Trust me, this, yeah. this wasn't my original. Because things change. Like this wasn't in the original, in the original plan, right? That was not in the original plan. Right? Yeah. Um, of why we're trying. I, 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 I wasn't like, Planning on doing real estate. I, when I first made this plan, I was still doing my team and my sales. And I'm like, and now I'm going to retire from it. I'm just going to stop real estate. But now I'm like, well, no, I like what I'm doing now. I see some opportunity. I see where I can go. I want to still do it. Right. So, and part of this reason, originally we were 500K a year. And when I added this in, I said, well, <laughs> if I'm a, then I need, I need more because if I want to actually play at a high level and take advantage of opportunities, even when I'm older. Then I need more money, and if I have about half a million a year to play with, just in investing, then I should be, I should keep me fun, right? Keep me fun for me, I should say. So that makes sense. But you got to think about your big why. What, what do you want? Where do you want to be in five years, three years? What does that money look like? How much does it take? What's that lifestyle? So you're living that certain lifestyle now. How much money you're bringing in, or your household bringing in? You know how much money that is. Is that a lifestyle you're comfortable with? <laughs> so, so, so say, yeah, so say, yeah. Are you comfortable with that three to five years from now? No. No? So oh. far, great, but always want more. <laughs> well, no, but I can say going just for want is just greed, and eventually it's, it's not going to, you're going to you're gonna lose interest because it's not for the right value. So it always makes it much clearer. You always want to get up in the morning. When you have, a, the more clarity you can put around what you want in three to five years, the more clear, the more likely you're going to get up every morning and do the work. Some people are like, I, I, people tell me, John, you 
you work so much, you got a lot. And I was like, yeah, because when my wife and I fleshed out this plan, I, fig I, I figured out, I told her for the next three to five years, I have to get super busy and serious mm -hmm. because I have to set everything up the way we met to get the money I need to get. Yeah. I had to get super serious in the next three to five years to make this happen, right? And we made a conscious choice, you know, like I work a lot, yeah. I listened to this podcast today and it was about parenting, but it said, you have to learn that there's a difference between wanting something and choosing something and you will want something forever. But when you choose something, that, that's why you can get up and go after it because he's chosen this path. Yeah. And I can tell you, my wife and I, actually it's probably about six years ago now, we, I don't know, um, we always make good money. So we got super serious about building a and We sold our house, did a bunch of stuff, paid off all of that. And, and, three, and one of our goal was to be a millionaire. We did it in about four years. We had a zero. We started with about a zero net worth. So, and that was in four years. And honestly, yeah, it took me, I don't know, what that six years was. Well, eight years at Keller Williams to figure it out. <laughs> so, <laughs> to get serious. What I'm trying to tell you now, get serious. And I'm, I am, I'm, I, I, I even to start from zero, I wholeheartedly believe you can start. I, I believe you can start from negative and be a millionaire in three to five years. Now, you may not want to put in the work, the amount of work to get that happen, but you can do it. I, I wholeheartedly believe you can. So, John called me three or four years ago and said, You have to help me to become a millionaire in the next couple of years. And I did know, I knew he meant it. And so it's okay. Now, I have to have a bigger world to make sure that. I have that opportunity for John. And he's done everything he said as far as if there's an opportunity to buy something, he actually has the savings to buy it. Yeah. And you know, we've invested in things yeah. and you heard our story, right? Any opportunity comes along, I have you gotta have the money to buy it. Now here's the thing is there's opportunities hitting in front of you as a real estate agent. If you're active, you're gonna come across opportunities every month. Every time you take a listing appointment, it's a potential opportunity, right? So if you think about that, the only difference is you don't view it as opportunity and one, you don't have the money to, to, to take advantage of that opportunity, right? So we gotta get serious about, so think about your why. What's your big why? Anyone have, uh, anyone have thought about their big why? Uh, for, for me, it's freedom. Yeah, freedom. Like earlier retirement than- Early retirement, that's right. So- yeah. I mean, earlier than 65 is what I mean. Well, yeah. Would be I ideal. Mean, and no offense, it'd be suck, it'd suck to get to 65 and your health's declining and all the things you plan to do and have fun, you can't actually do. That's, that's what I'm yeah, uh, that's why I said I, I'm, I'm 45 now. I was like, I want to get to where I want to get to this place in three to five years because I want to be able to go at 50 and take time off and go play and, and go run the marathon across the river all the time. The things that I have on my bucket list I want to do that's going to take. You know, that's going to take a month off work to do it, right? And, and to, okay. Questions? Thoughts? Everyone clear? You got to have something that makes you get up in the morning, okay? All right. Now, normally we spend like an hour on this and I go through this session and make you close your eyes and we're thinking, we all cry, but that's okay. Okay, we're blinking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so close. Okay. And this was done. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, how you get to uh, what you need to do to achieve your goal. Okay. So this now we're still not talking real estate down and dirty right now. We're talking still higher level. So um, Gene did this. Lid. Who was there at the team meeting? Well, it kind of got broken up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I just have, yes, I'm following. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it real here. Okay. So lifestyle. What it really means is how much money per year do you need to make in passive income to fund your lifestyle? Whatever that looks like. Like, I want to live part time in Sacramento, part time in Palm Springs, right? What, how much is that going to cost? Right? How, how far are you setting these things out for? Like, when you are doing this, like just as far as you can see right now, as far that's as you why can you see. change it and every as year. far as you can see, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. As far as you can see, it doesn't have to be, like mine is retirement, I'm 45, I can see 55 pretty 
not far off. <laughs> like some of you are like, I want freedom and I want to divorce it. Some of you are clean. Maybe like, you're a little longer. Maybe you're like, heck, I don't know, right? I got to find a spouse. I don't even know if you're married. Right? I got to find a spouse. Like, I'm like, you know, like, the lot could change, right? So what you really want to think about is, okay, fine. Like I said, if, you, if you're uncomfortable going that far, which most people are, then get three to five years. If you want to even go one to two years, I don't care. I'm thinking like three years. Yeah, so think about three years. Most people can project out what's going to happen in their life likely in the next three years. Now, not that it won't change, but you can definitely project out the next three years. Okay, so in year three, in year three, what do you want your month, your income to be? That annual income, take home pay, so you can live that lifestyle you're living three years you, from now. I would like it to be somewhere, somewhere around at least like 500000 to 700000 a year. Okay. And this is after everything has been paid out? Yeah. Three years. So we're just going to go with it. Okay. So say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, some of you may be 100. Some of you may be 50. I don't care. I'm not judging anybody. Like I said, I have a friend, 40K a year, golden. Know. Now, he lives out in the hinterlands, doesn't care, chops some wood, right? That's what he does. He loves it. Doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, he's good, right? So he doesn't care, right? So, and he's super happy. You go meet him, super happy dude. Like, no qualms in life. No issues, right? No nothing, right? Pay the bill. Okay. So five hundred thousand. So if this is your lifestyle, and now Glenn's got a big lifestyle because in three years he's balling at five hundred thousand. That's, that's what I'm. He's balling, right? He's balling. Right? Right? I'm definitely seeing it myself. Okay, okay, it sounds good. So the way you have to get there, and the only way you get there is through investments, because in the end our goal is to get this what passive. Oh, I'll say I'm trying to get that from like like from working on it. Yeah, no, that's fine. But here's what I want you to know. You're saying 500000 because you can imagine a lifestyle yeah. that 500000 Yeah, exactly. That you don't mind working for. Exactly. I don't. Okay. Now, in 20 years, say you like that lifestyle. Do you want to give it up? No, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do more. I'm going to do more. <laughs> right. So in the end, it's not about more hustling. In the end, it's about figuring out exactly. how do I get this money without working. Right, I want to be financially free because in the end, we all want to be financially free, right? So, how do I be free? Is right now you're going to have to work to get this five hundred thousand, which you can all do. You can all do it, but now, and I don't know how many know that I know in real estate, it's a lot of work to get five hundred thousand. You can get there, definitely can get there. Five hundred thousand. I've had definitely five hundred thousand income years in real estate in my business, right? But it, it it's going to take some work. So, okay, so now we're going to talk about but the end goal someday is to have that lifestyle but pay passively. Make sense? Where I'm not doing work, it just comes in. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? Lovely. Okay, so now we're going to say I need investments to make that happen. And Gene would say, which I agree with, is you should target about a 10% return on your investment. So, whenever I'm doing real estate investments. I'm, I'm, I look for investments at a rate of 10 to 12 percent return on investment. So, so that's the judgment I use. I find it to be a good measure to, to figure out whether something's a good deal or not. It's really hard to find it in California right now. So um, I'm looking outside the state, but just so you know, it's hard to get this. Right? Is that even like when you initially go into it, or like if you have to put money in for like the major things and then you rent it out, you know, for a long time and not have to worry about that, like? Like, is it always a 10% from the beginning or it will get to be? No, I, I don't. Okay. Well, Sorry, that's, that's, that's an investment if question. Keep, if you keep it and you're renting it out, yeah. you're most likely going to want to refinance that yeah. and therefore make a 10% return on the refinance. Okay. okay. So yeah, so it doesn't have to be Sorry, up front. That might have been yeah, it doesn't have to be upfront. front. So, but I, I will recommend if it's your for investment and you need the cash flow, that means you can't afford to float the mortgage. Yeah. You can't afford to float the rental mortgage. Or without being in dire straits or cramping your style a lot, then yeah, you need to have this up front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? If I can take a fixer and I can spend three months and still pay the mortgage and fix it up and spend cash doing that and then rent it out at a higher thing and maybe refi my loan because I got a hard money to purchase it because it's a fixer and refi it out and that takes five, six months and I can float that, then yeah, I can project 10% on the back side and okay. float the front side, right? Mm -hmm. But it depends on your situation. But I'm saying overall, you want to get to a point where your investments are averaging 10% return. Okay. 
So if I say all my investments are 10% return and I need a $500 income, how much in investments do I need? Five million. So it's real easy. Whatever money you need, add a zero. <laughs> That's what Glenn needs. He needs five, five million in assets, making a 10% return. What's this last beat? What did you say? I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. So here's the problem is you can make 500000 but the government wants their share. And if you live in California, we're going to use a 50% rate. California, between state, federal, sales tax, other tax, you make five hundred thousand dollars. You're probably going to pay fifty percent of the government. So what do we got to do? So to truly, to Glenn, truly to bring home five hundred thousand dollars to pay to do this lifestyle, ten million. What's that? You have to bring in ten million investment, bro. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. So ten million. Now. It, it seems like a lot, but think about it. Glenn, how old are you? I'm 29. 29. When do you think of it ever retiring? Never. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably like by like I'm like 48, 50. Okay, so you got 20 years. Yeah. All okay, right, 20 years. Now, 10 million. Now, let's talk about this. Say you bought a rental. What do you have to pay down? 20 percent. 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 So, how much to get the 10 million with 25%? Yeah. Yeah. Glenn needs to buy properties with 25% down. He needs $250,000 cash to pull that off. He needs to be able to get a 10% return. And by 20 years later, he's got to be able to pay it off. And then he will have $10 million in assets that's netting him $500,000. Netting him more money to pay his taxes, but he nets five hundred thousand dollars. Now you can fudge this number, but I, it fifty percent is a good number. It, it yeah. is a good number. So, and Michael, I can attest to that. Now, now you know, <laughs> you totally you say. <laughs> no, it'll, 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 it's conservative, but it'll, it'll yeah, yeah, it'll hurt. But think about that. Now, when I say then I say yeah, because you're in real estate. The good part is you can leverage, right? You don't have to have all $10 million. You're buying stocks, $10 million of stock. Mm -hmm. You're buying real estate, 25% down. Isn't it two and a half million? Oh, sorry. A 10 million? Two and a half million, correct. But still, he's got 20 years to do that. Yeah. Yeah, see, if I. I know, he even said two, two and a half million in one year. <laughs> now, Glenn could say, great, let's buy one. This year, or let's buy two this year. But but I need you to do the lid exercise because I need you to get real about your money. And you need to realize right now, everyone can say in this room, I'm going to work for my money, I'm going to work for my money. But all it takes is a bad accident right out there for this to all go away. If any of you have disability insurance, which I probably, probably don't, then this all goes away. If you're going to land on the state, you're likely going to get about 20 to 30% of your income. And you'd be destitute for the rest of your life. So, this is a big deal. And this is what I think people need to understand. And when you start having money, then when you go on listing appointments, you're looking at houses as a potential investor. You say, hey, I know you want this price. I'm willing to buy this house at this price. You say, no matter. I mean, I know you're right. Yeah, it's probably been four or five this year. We don't know we're going into it. Also, you look at it, you do your options. But would you like to go in and off of where you say, hey, look, here's your options? Yeah. One is, I'll buy the house from you at this price. We can list the house at this price as it is. Or heck, I'll tell you what, I'll invest the money to rehab the house and we'll sell this at this price, but we split the profit on top of the commission. 
Yeah, what if you went into every listing appointment with that presentation? Yeah, you could so, listing? Yeah, so <laughs> we just closed one Wednesday. We each made an additional $60,000 on it. And so you sell it. But we have the money to do the fixes or to buy them. Okay, I want to get to that. <laughs> okay, let's work. Everyone good? Okay, from this exercise, you should be good at this because you should know this number in the end. And you should be able to backdoor what you need to do to invest in enough properties to make that happen. Clear as mud? Yeah. How's everyone feeling? Ready. Okay. Ready? <laughs> like, no, I got this. Right. But that's what I'm telling you is, wait, if you got 20 years, you gotta make two and a half million. Yeah, that would be the last one Yeah, exactly. I mean, but you see the window? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 20 You're years is half of that. It's 125,000 per year over the next 20 years. Yeah, 20 it's years. a really realistic goal. Yeah. And yeah. that's why his goal will change. Yeah, for sure. But that's the thing is, is don't worry, he has a big goal. You know, you can great, you could do a great lifestyle test. If you lived in Nevada and you had a hundred thousand dollars a year, then could you live in a fine land, right? So that <laughs> makes sense. So just, just know where you are. He has perspective because he's 29. I'm going to say you have the amount of time. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a time thing, right? But some of you may say, yeah, I can hustle, right? I can hustle. All right. Clear? Okay. It doesn't happen overnight. And that's what I want to know. It's the little thing. I hate this because I hate the, like, Dogecoin. I hate all this stuff because it's not that you can't explain it, but there's this. There's this theme out there of getting rich, that the only way you get rich is get rich quick, right? That's the only way I make it out. When it's really, wealth is a slow, it's a slow game. And the problem is it's so slow, people don't even realize it. it's happening, right? Either you're losing or you're winning. And a lot of people lose because they're taking a, they're taking a slow, a, a quick approach to it. So, all right, we're gonna get into the documents that are in front of you. Is it on already? Am I? fundamental docs that we use for business planning. I use it on my real estate team. These are what KWRI uses. And in fact, I have confirmed this is what Gary Keller uses. So. <laughs> That's okay. So 135 is fairly simple. There's one main business objective. You're going to have three goals to achieve that objective. And you're going to have five strategies for each goal. Okay. So that this is a very simple version of it down and dirty. So what's your main business objective? Now, this is, you're in real estate, so you have one of three measures, units closed, volume closed, or GCI, gross commission income, you have one of those three. So whatever floats your boat the most, for example, my team, even though I'm a more down and dirty profit guy, my team likes to have a unit goal. They like, they like the idea of like 100 units, they just want to close a certain amount of units and the money will come just from that. That's fine, I don't care, I can estimate from that. But you gotta have you gotta have a goal. So what's your goal for your business that you want to achieve? This is for the year, right? For the year. GCI. And if you don't know what transactions or volume translates to what, then just put in, I want to make this much money. Anyone want to share their goals? Uh, mine is one of the 24 units. 24 units, I like 24 units. Anyone else want to share their goals? 40, 20 listings, 20 buyers. All right, I like it. Anyone 
Anyone else? I want a net 130. Net 130. I like that. Net 130. I just, because when you see growth, I'm like, that's not really my money. Yeah. Yeah. Net is, is yeah. Kind of so you can't do net, you're just going to put back. Back into it, right? Back into your current back. So, all right, okay. Now, if you notice, you got your goal. We're going to have three goals to achieve the objective. Okay, so three ways. Now, most real estate agents is going to be listings, buyers, and what I call leverage or growth. Maybe it's skills you need to adopt, skills you need to learn, um, uh, systems you need to put in, or maybe you need to hire someone. Right? <laughs> and you get to the point where you're hiring someone. So let's start with one listing. Listing should be your number one priority. In the, in the section, Sean, right? I need to afford that big office that my partner for. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Jose and Lindsay moved into a, or moved into a much bigger office with a higher rent. So she has additional motivation oh, to work hard now. So. <laughs> I told Mark she needs to find another team member for these three ways of guys. <laughs> All right. So goal one should be listings. And how many listings of that objective you want to be in? So if you said I want 40 and 20, 20, then great. Goal one should be 20 listings. So is this what we're doing now? Is this different than what we just decided? What do you mean? Like uh, you, like how I said, one thirty. You said twenty twenty. So what you have to track down is okay. How much how much income do you want to get? Right. If you're not doing this, and you're only doing buy side. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> how much do you collect? Like that? So then, so yeah. then basically, so like if you're doing twenty four units, you're gonna put that as your main business objective. But I would double because you want to net that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So double. After taxes, so either you say I'm gonna take thirty percent off of that. Add additional 30% off the tax. So you're going to say, so she's backing down on income. She says, I want 130 net. So then, what well, is the expenses do you pay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you may have other expenses. It may not be 30, it may be 50%. Maybe you have to add 260 in income to net 130. Oh, okay, got it. You know, so you got to figure that out if you're going to go from there. So, Sean, yes. the <laughs> one main yeah, if you're going to be unit based, so okay. Helen, so you're going to say, I want to do a 30 unit thing. Okay. Okay, 30 would be okay. 30 okay, and then, and then the listing is number one. Correct. So, how do we achieve? So, we'll go up and say it's 30. How do I park? Okay, 40. How do I achieve 40 transactions closed next year? Goal one is I'm going to do 20 listings closed. Okay. Okay. Right? So that's my goal one. That's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> that's your mantra. That's your mantra. <laughs> that's becoming my mantra. That's what I tell people. That's why getting to a million dollars in real estate isn't working harder. It's working smarter. Trust me. I try to yeah. do the harder way. Smart is a lot easier. So, okay, two is going to be your buyer goal. How many buyers are you going to close? Now, obviously, between the buyer and seller goal, has got to add up to your transaction goal. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, so, you know, those things got to work out together. So. And your third goal, what I would call growth. People, agents often underestimate one. Say you want to do 40. They often estimate what do I need to be as grow as. Like, you're, you're like, I'm going to stop my... My hairstyling business and move forward full time, right? Sixteen more days. So that's that's not sixteen more days, days, right? Exactly. So that would be a goal. That would be goal like permanently out of hairstyle, right? Another goal may be I need to get to family union and I need to get to mega camp because I need to hang around higher minded people because I need better. I need more training. I, I don't know how to do listings well. I need to go to trainings on how to do listings well, right? I'm just saying because doesn't that the better pricing end tomorrow mm -hmm. today? Yeah, it goes up to fifteen hundred. No, I thought it was. I thought they just said something less today. Less. Eleven ninety nine. Oh, maybe it, it creeps up. I think up. it's eleven ninety nine. Yeah, I thought that's like All tomorrow right. close call. Oh, eleven ninety nine. Is it end tomorrow? It oh, I just know it's not fifteen hundred. It's yeah. more like eleven ninety nine. I thought it was about the thousand until the thirtieth. 
Okay. I, I think it's a thousand until tomorrow. I thought it's spring or maybe January. Yeah. So goal three is 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 growth. Trust me, if you're trying to get to ten million in owned assets, right? Um, I, I guarantee Glenn has to learn a lot about um, investments, investing property. He's got to learn about construction and how what remodeling costs and what he should do. Right? He's got to learn how to be a good landlord. Right. You've got to learn to how do I do a listing presentation where I get listings and I can I give them a place where I can option to buy their home or share them. You've got to know those things, right? So those are all things that you want to think about growth wise. Right. I'm going to go to family reunion and I'm going to do breakouts only on listings right? <laughs> to make sure I get better at listings, right? So think about those things about growth. And then now you've got your three goals. So goal three should be what you need to do to help you get to your one and two. Uh, all right. Now we do five strategies. Now I find the si the simpler you are as real estate, you don't need five. Some of you only need one or two <laughs> if you're doing well. The more complicated your business, the more strategies you need. So goal one, uh, Helen, what was your goal? Uh, it was oh, goal one, 10 listings. T 10 right. listings. Okay, so let's talk about, Helen, how, do, how are we going to get to 10 listings for you? How do we get to 10 listings? That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, no, but that's why we're in the class. How, how, how what, what's the number one way people get listings? Oh, people. Your spirit. Your spirit. By okay. far, by far, the number one way you get listings is your spirit. By far. So, strategy number one should be like, I need to get down and dirty on my spirit. Right? I should be 5 by 5 ing it. I should be 36 touching it. I should be having some sort of client party. I should be giving out pies. I should be doing something. But my database needs to be loved, and I need to ask them if they're thinking about selling. Right? So number one should be database always, on listings especially. How do I get my database right? Can we keep going? That's right. You keep right going. Now. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. And honestly, you could probably get to 10 listings if you did your database right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Some of you don't need a whole bunch of strategies to get your goal. Right? Because I can see you, you're talking less than one listing a month from your database. Less than one listing a month from your database. And then you guys know, where else do you get your listings? Open. Open windows. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you do open houses, I get listings, but maybe I need to orientate my open houses to get more listings. So what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. So I need to make sure I do walk the neighborhood beforehand because I'm going to get more sellers there because I'm going to get the neighbors to show up who actually own homes, right? If you just use the traffic and social media, you're going to tend to get buyers because they're the ones that's coming to see the home, right? If you want to get sellers, you need to attract people who are in the neighborhood, which means you need to get out there and walk. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do two open houses. I'm going to do two open houses a month. I'm going to walk it. I'm going to do 100 doors before every open house. I'm gonna walk and knock and draw. Or maybe I'm just gonna draw. I don't care, whatever. I'm gonna work up to knocking. Right? Okay, great. Now that's a strategy. Now in the home of the open house, I'm gonna orient it toward listings. So what does that mean? What are you gonna have? I'm gonna display a comps in the area. Right? Because you want people to stop and say, hey, I have comps. You better have a good script if someone is a neighbor coming to see the home. Better have a good script on how you handle that person. Yeah. Yeah. Better know the inventory. Yeah. Inventory, yeah. You gotta know the inventory. Yeah. Well, you should. Well, I guess it's not necessarily your listing, huh? You're just saying open houses. I was gonna say you should know the inventory anyway. If it's your listing, but it open may house, not be your listing. But right? it may not be your listing. Yeah. So when I did open houses, I did when I started, I didn't I did open houses not from not, they were not usually mine. There were other agents, but yeah. I went on Metro List and I looked at all the listings. I looked at the pricing in the neighborhood so I can talk about the neighborhood. So when the seller came in, I could talk about pricing. What you bet? Like, if I did an open house right now in Atomas, I could, I could approximately tell the, how, how much the house is worth just from them telling me where do you live, how many bedrooms you've got, and you've got square footage. And I could try to do your house probably between here and here. Right now. You should have that familiarity. That's how you can work. Right? So, all right. Any other strategies people are thinking about on listings? 
um, client events. Client events. Um, and doing like the pop by gifts. Pop by, that's excellent. Pop by gifts. Um, I'm going to focus on staying in touch with clients from my previous career, mm -hmm. going into this being my only career, because that's like 20 something years. Yeah, that you're going to have to use, right? That I've been in front of them still while I've been doing this, and now I'm not going to be, so I have to be diligent about trying to like stay in contact with them, keep yeah. them in front one of me. One of the keys of my transition full time was I worked at the state a little bit, then I was a lobbyist for a while. Well, when I went, even though it was a recession, I was in the middle of a recession. When I left, I used all those contacts yeah. because they all have, still had state jobs, right? <laughs> so there's a few people that could get approved for a loan at that time, right? And, and do things, right? So. Yeah, definitely leverage what you've done previously. Okay, goal two, buyers. How many buyers do you say you're going to do? How are you going to find those? Open houses. Open houses. Marketing. They come from the database too, right? Right, but marketing. Marketing, social media. The people in your neighborhood that you know that are renting a house. Yeah, target renters. I mean, Rachel said good right now. You could go outside and triple the buyers, right? So. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, so if you're a newer agent, I'd recommend that you go heavy on the buy side because it'd be a lot easier to get to than live on the list and sell side. So if I was doing any listing goal as a new agent, I would say primarily from my database, buyer side, but my buyer side are gonna be from my activities, right? Um, open houses or door knocking or yada yada. Okay, goal three, which is leverage growth. Think about strategies you should for growth. When I'm saying this is, you should be thinking about books you need to read. I know there's books you need to read. What? Books that you should be reading. Strategy. Yeah, so we're talking about growth, leverage. Most of you are not in a position to hire someone right now. So you should be thinking how you better yourself. Coaching. Coaching. <laughs> I highly recommend you have a coach. Someone asked me the other day, well, John, after your experience, what do you think the most? The first is I didn't hire a coach right away. Coaches make you go far faster. They help you reach your goals faster. Um, two, uh, yeah, books, events, trainings. You should be on your plan. I put a line on. I like to find like a mentor. Somebody. Yeah, a mentor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like. I like to listen to the bigger, bigger pockets podcast. It always keeps me investment focused, right? So that's something I like to do with as far as growth. I'm always looking for innovative ideas about how people do things, how they find investment properties, how they handle their investment properties. So I'm, I'm, I always do that. Whenever I go to family reunions, I always have a, um, a goal in mind of what I'm trying to learn. And then if you are at a point where you may need to hire someone, great. Usually about 25, 35 transactions are the point when you can consider hiring someone. I'm really going to have an assistant. And they're going to do all my social media that I painfully do at night every night. Right? And they're going to do it for me. Make sense? Okay. This document needs to be completed. This is your annual goal. This is, this is what you want to do. These are how you do it. These are the strategies you're going to work on. To achieve that goal, you need to revisit this document and don't overdo it. It doesn't have to be super pretty, just keep it simple. You need to revisit this document once a month at least. So it needs to go in that folder that you look at every month. One thing, one habit you're gonna have to do to get to, if you really want to be great at goals, is you gotta be able to visit your goals at least weekly. Can we get this sent to us so we have a blank one so Absolutely. we can print it and do it? And actually, I make mine electronic just so I can keep it. You can throw mine in my, my diary. Yeah, exactly. Write it in your diary. My journal. Write it in there. I wrote it so I can look at it and I put it on the tape with a marker so that I, every morning I can just scan it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But you should have some 401 in front of you. The document? Yep. All right. The 401 is a document that my team uses, my real estate team, as well as my leadership team, and we use it um, weekly. And actually, we talk about it. 401 is a document that Gary Keller teaches, which I am here. So on the very top, you will see annual goals for the year. So whatever you put your annual goal for the year is. So um, I want to do uh, 40 deals, 2020. So my year is I want to do 40 close transactions. Enter annual job school. You're in your email, so I can know what I'm doing. Um, Oh, and then you, I don't know what you're doing. I have a quick question. Yes. What is a point two five on my? Like, how do you get a point two five? Is that from a round? From referral. From referral. Yeah. So, so for all gotta, referrals, point two five, and then it'll end up being one whole one. Every depends. Time. Depends if you got twenty five percent. So if you got twenty five percent of the commission, you got a point two five. Oh. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? So we yeah. kind of close as a full close. So for example, on my team. I'm 50 50 splits with my agents. Every time I close a deal, I'm half a close. Half a close. Because okay. I spent 50 50. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. that makes sense now. So I was like, this is more than I thought that I did, but that makes sense. What did you need up on the screen, John? I'm sorry. No, that's just my 411 call. Oh. Yeah, I want to make sure you got the right thing. Okay, this should be on. Okay, cool. All right, 411, you should be entering your. Now, this is going to copy a lot of what you did on your 135, but it's going to be a thing you can look at this sheet. This sheet, you should be looking at daily. You should be meeting um, with an accountability partner weekly on this. All right. So, any goal at top? So, and they have job goals, business goals, financial goals, personal goals. Daily? You should be looking at it daily. Okay. You should be meeting with accountability for your weekly things at least once a week. So, you should have an accountability partner, a coach. So when I meet with my coach, we go over my goals for the week and what I did and didn't do. So I highly recommend you start on the right side, your personal goals. The goal of your business, real estate business, should be achieved to be to achieve your personal goals. Trust me, it will make you get out of bed much quicker in the morning when you see movement on your personal side of life, not on your business side of life. Lindy and I have been working together on some stuff, and when you see movement, isn't it more exciting yeah. when it's on your personal side, right? Money is one thing, but when you can use the money to achieve personal goals, then you feel like your life has momentum. When the dots connect that easily, it's like, okay, I'm so scared to be a grown-up. <laughs> 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 so, I had a, a very good agent in the office tell me today, she's like, in 2022, my goal is to be an adult. <laughs> so I need a financial planner. This was I hear this person. This person. Okay, good. I've been an adult this year. So okay. So think about your personal goals. What you want to achieve this year? What would you have to do in your personal life this year? Now we have that live discussion right here. What do you desire from home? Personal home, family, spiritual, educational. What do you need? So when I deal with my team, for example, Rich and our real estate team, we start with the personal side. Hey, you say we're going to do this, right? So you can put up there, I'm going to remodel my home this year. That means flooring, paint, the thing. Okay, great. And I think the flooring is going in, I think it is. So think about personal goals. And if you achieve this list of personal goals this year, you would consider that a great winning year for you personally. Not money wise, but what you want to accomplish with the money. Or heck, it may not even be money. Maybe it's just health. <laughs> Maybe I just want to get up and walk in the morning or get up and do or eat better, or whatever it needs to be. What does that look like? 
If you know this, it should drive your annual, your per, annual personal financial plan. Because I want to take home 130,000, right? 130,000 should be here. I want to take home 130,000. This will say what I'm going to do with the 130,000. Or what, not all of it, but part Calculate of it. Home. Not all of it. Some it's rent and all that stuff, right? But but what am I going to achieve with it, right? What do I want to achieve? I want to buy a house. I want to buy a rental, right? <laughs> Whatever that is, that's my personal side. So I make the money here. And then what you want to make, that starts with your business and job. So what's the difference between business and job? It's what's on your list, okay? Remember we did our 135 strategies, right? One strategy she had was, uh, uh, let's do, I don't know, we're talking about open houses, right? Maybe I suck at open houses right now. Okay, I wanna get better at open houses. So one of my business goals is, to, is well, my personal goal is to conduct two open houses per month or three open houses or four open houses a month. And my business goal is to systemize open houses so that it's super simple and successful, right? That means I'm gonna have a system. I know my, where my signage goes. I'm gonna put out my sign. I'm gonna walk certain days. I'm gonna have a set flyer that I'm gonna walk with. I'm gonna set flyer for the open house, right? Like I'm gonna systemize open houses so that it's super easy for me to do. You want to know the power of open houses? One year, I think it was like 2015, I forget the exact year. I was always pissed off because I always started slow on my goals. So I said, this year I'm going to start really good on my goals because I was got lagged behind in the first quarter that I was trying to catch up. So I said, I'm going to do open houses. And I did open houses too. I started in January, literally January, the first weekend after New Year's. I went and I did freezing cold. I remember one was just raining with leaves are blowing in the house, <laughs> literally. And I did two open houses. Per week, all of my houses. I'm going to do this all first quarter just to make sure I'm successful. By the middle of February, six weeks in, I had to stop because I had too many showings on the weekend. I couldn't do the open house. Mm -hmm. I could not do it. And I remember that first quarter, I got an award for the. Uh, I was, I was the top individual earner in all of KW Northern California Hawaii wow. that quarter. And I've never been on the list since. <laughs> <laughs> it was all just open houses. House help? What? That's all I did. I literally only did open houses. I literally said, I'm going to do open houses. And I literally had a trunk of stuff that I would have in. I literally had a plastic carton that I would put everything that's going inside the open house to do. So I, I, I remember on a certain day, I think it was Thursdays, I would load everything into it. So flyers, anything I needed, as well as walking materials, I put them in the trunk. The signs just lived in my trunk. I literally had like 20 signs in my trunk the whole time, right? They lived in my trunk. And then all I did was, in the, if I didn't have an open house, I was Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, I was looking for an open house, trying to find one, right, from the vendor. And that's what I did. And I did that, and then I walked. I said I'd walk 50 doors. I ended up going to 100, but I'd walk, drop. I, was, I used to knock, but then I found out I didn't have enough time because I was showing home so much, so I just started dropping <laughs> on open houses, right? And that got me listings and buyers. And I, not only that, anyone who signed in, I got really good. I found out I sucked at getting people to sign in. So I started learning scripts on how to get people to sign in. And then when every time I got them, 20, I got everyone who signed in. On Monday, I put everyone in. And I had a two-week follow-up method for all for all my leads. And I got good enough to where I was getting one to two appointments per open house. And I was getting another two to three appointments after the open house for the next two weeks. So I was working the follow-up, right? So you contact them that Monday. After the open house, mm -hmm. and then you do it every single week, right? Yeah, and I had a whole script. This is modeled off a 10 days of pain, which is a whole thing. Um, but yeah, I would text them, email them, call them on Friday. I, uh, I think it's Thursday or Friday. I would text them and say, Hey, I'm setting up my showing schedule for the weekend for my buyers. I have time on Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. Is there any homes you want to do? <laughs> and these are told, I mean, they, they haven't even responded at all. My last one, my last script was the best after the two weeks of the, the next weekend coming up. I would say, hey, you know, I haven't heard from you for two weeks. I don't want to bother you and waste your time or waste my time. I don't like being bothered and wasting time either. So if you're not interested in buying a home, no big deal. Just let me know. I'll drop you off the list. Or actually, I'm just going to drop off the list, so I don't want to know you. That, that little text message got me a ten like, no, 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 we're just busy. We are actually interested in buying a house, right? So it got me a lot of responses that way. So I, I got very 
keen on the scripts. I got screen. I got very keen on how I do how I do it. When someone walks in, walks out, what do I say? What do I do? I got very scripted on that. So can you do an open house class for us? Sure. <laughs> I'll do it with Amy. We do it open. Yeah. So, so think about that, right? So that would be a business goal, right? How do I structure my business so my open houses are super efficient? How do I structure talking to my database? How do I get the people in my phone into command and loving them 36 times a year? Right? That's a system. That's a business. So you want a business? Businesses that are built off systems. Your job is to work the system. So your job is two, three, four open houses a month. Okay, I want to do database. I'm going to call uh, 20 people a week. Here, it's, I'm going to make sure I have a system. So I'm going to follow the old system. I'm going to do two last names a week. Uh, you know, a week. Whatever it is. Okay. okay. So you take that down. She wants to do 40. What do I have to do this month? We take 40 and say she wants to take December off because it's slow, right? In fact, she's going to take two months off because she's making so much money. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking time off. <laughs> but say she was because things happen, vacations. Yeah, a week. <laughs> You're going to go one vacation this year? <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, yeah, I'm going to do three different. Are you all on vacation? Yeah. Well, no, not really. I mean, I'm available, but if you know people aren't calling on Thanksgiving, I'm not going to bug them on Thanksgiving. Right. Okay. So let's just say ten months, you got to do four. So that means she's got to do four a month. So it's going to be two listings, two buyers per month on a monthly. The business goal one may be get my open houses done. Or attend John and Amy's open house class, right? Systemize my open houses. Okay, monthly goals. If I close that amount, how much money am I going to make? If I have to do any of this stuff, maybe you're not going to finish it anything, but maybe you're going to start on some stuff. Like, I like to say, if you're going to do with one of your goals as a, family, a large family vacation, great. Then have a talk with your family and start figuring out where you want to go. Price it out. You don't have to buy it right now. But price it out. Know what you need to do. That way you know the amount, right? So some of these things may be just working on achieving, helping to achieve your personal goal. Okay, got that? And then it translates all the way, all the way to the week. What you need to do. And you need to enter your weekly goals for achieving each of these things in a month. So if I'm doing two transactions, two buyers, two sellers this month, then I need to find a buyer or seller each week, right? So I'm going to find a listing or a buyer this week, a listing or a buyer this week, a listing or a buyer this week, a listing or a buyer this week. Great. What am I going to do to that? I'm going to do an open house. I'm going to call five people in my database per day. I'm going to research vacations. I'm going to research a Hawaii vacation this year. I want to make sure by the end of the month I close one that I make at least $10,000 this month. There's a reason we're talking in December, and this is June. <laughs> that you should start being be able to set these up so that you can start doing this. So literally, my team they list these out, and every every week we meet and we go over. Well, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? And if they didn't, I say why. And this is why it's important to have a coach or accountability partner, someone who can look at and say, you know, hey John, this is what I said I do. And I'm like, well, did you do it? Well, no. Most people take this and take the 135 and the lid and they throw it in their desk and they never look at it again. And I can tell you wholeheartedly the 401 works wonderfully. It's very tedious, I can tell you that, but it works wonderfully for getting momentum in your life. I can't stress that enough, but it has to be a living document. I mean, you look at it daily. I literally look at my daily, I have a folder, I look at it daily. I literally have an electronic version, but I print it out, put it in my folder, so that I open my folder, and it's there. <laughs> I mean, it just went into my daily affirmations list. Yeah, yeah. So, so if whatever I have to say list, it to myself, now I'm going to remember. Yeah, now you're going to remember, right? Yeah, daily affirmations thing. So, yeah, build it into the morning routine, and trust me, things will start changing. You'll be sitting in the shower thinking about how you're achieving this. Right? It just happens that way. It's not like meant to happen, it's just, 
hey, I got this idea, and you're like thinking about it, right? So you should say blind in the mirror and listen. Okay. Yeah. Taylor's got a board in his shower. Then we have the button. In the shower? I love it. When I get, I got it because I need to use it and get it online with my notebook. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that's super cool. Oh, that's smart. Oh, that's not alone. You can find out. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, imagine in the shower you got in, and half of it was your goals for, you know, your goals. I half of it is just ideas, right? That's a good action for about more than two minutes to take a shower. I mean, I used Fair to formulate clients' hair color in the shower, so now I gotta do something <laughs> other than wash my body. Might as well do this. I'm trying to cook when I'm in the shower, so I gotta hurt me. Okay, some other time. Uh, just remember, if you don't achieve your goal, just add it to the next part. Right? I didn't get a buyer and seller. I only got a buyer this week, but not a seller. Okay, within the next three weeks, I got to find an extra seller, right? Because I got to get to four by week four, right? And when you start doing this, naturally it's going to lead you to lead generation activities because you're going to start racking your brain about how do I find that fourth person. You start thinking, oh yeah, I talked to that person. I need to call them back, right? Blah, 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 blah. Or you start hitting the phones on your open house people. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Because this is what you want. I've never met someone highly successful that doesn't write down their goals and look at them all. I've never met that person. Becky, put it on this back. You do what you want. It also goes back to John to the beginning of your why. Yeah. Are you going to accept failure week one, failure week two, failure week three? Or are you going to, is it that important? You will get out and do what it's going to take. And that's why I say it's better if it's grounded in your personal side, your big why. Because that'll actually make you accountable. Because the people that don't use it are the people that actually put down stuff, but they don't want to be held accountable to it. That's not really what they want. And that's okay, I don't mind. But put down what you're really going to do. If you're really just going to make $40,000 this year and you're comfortable working that amount, then work, work it. But don't lie about it, right? Don't lie to yourself about it. Right? Yeah, own it. Own it, right? Be a big, and that's fine. If you can say, look, I'm doing job because I, I sucked it up. This year I made $40,000 net, then you're working at a $40,000 level. I'm not saying you are, but I'm just saying that's the reality, right? So, so you know if you're going to do more than $40,000 next year, it's going to take more action. That's just the way it is. Questions? One hour. No, it's one hour. Oh, oh, I did it. One o'clock. Oh. Questions? Oh, good. Down and dirty. Down and dirty. Yeah, well, down and dirty. dirty. Well, we don't have any more time for a section, so. Yeah. Any questions on sections? Yeah, think, think about, get your big why down. Now, now Helen, we talked about your big why. It's yeah. pretty clear, right? So is it enough for you to get up in the morning and do that work? Well, you show up every day. The question is, are you doing the work that you need to be doing, right? Okay. Is it enough? That the database. The database, yeah. Like you said, your goal, you can achieve just from your database, right? Maybe an open house here, too. But you can pretty much achieve it by yourself. Well, yeah, my last open house I held, I got two buyers out of it, and there's zero nice. buyers there. Just yeah, exactly. So, okay, so look, I'm going to get my listings from my database, and I'm going to get my buyers, maybe some from my database, but most from open houses. You know, I need to do two open houses a month, one open house a month to achieve my goal. And it's pretty easy to figure out your. It should be pretty easy to figure out your commission structure too for transactions. So, what's your average commission price? If you don't know, um, five hundred thousand is the average in Sacramento. We're actually almost at an office, but if you're newer, you're probably at four hundred thousand. But if you're experienced, you should probably be near ten thousand. Which means in your business, you should be tracking things like average price points. If you're not, you should. So say 
on 500,000. How much do I make a commission? And the 80 20 split, so uh, average is 2.5%. Actually, most of our average actually has an office around 2.2. Depends on what you really are, but something you can track. This would be how much? Well, you know your commissions. How much do you net on this? Well, uh, you said 20 plus 20% split it? <laughs> about 85. 85. No, 10,000. What? 10, yeah, like ten grand. Okay. Now, how much do you need to get that to you get to your personal financial goal? Now, if you want to be personal financial, remember you gotta you gotta take approximately this is higher, but you can probably get thirty percent. I'm not making that much money. You'll need thirty percent more than that to take your tax. And if you have other expenses. So say I'm going to minus 50%. So net, that means after I pay my taxes, my gas bill, my MLS dues, all that stuff, I'm going to net 5,000 per year. Right? And she said, I want to get to 130,000. 60 gets a 260. Right? We already did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will we be given this stuff at the end of the year, too? Like our stats of everything? Yeah, you can request it. We can't. Okay. Actually, you can pull it from, you go to mykw.com. Okay, yeah. Mykw.com. You'll see your picture in the left hand corner. Your picture is there's a thing on there that says, it. It says reports. Okay. And if you I click on the reports, okay. if you click on the reports, it has all your reports, all your production stuff. It helps. They'll have your trends. And you say, What's my average price point? What's my average commission? It'll be all <laughs> cool. based on your actual business. So you can't lie, which is nice. Oh, I do two and a half. <laughs> Just when I track our team, and our team is about 2.35 on that. We do take a lot of listings at three, three and a half percent, three to three and a half. That's most of our listings, but our buy size tend to be lower, and sometimes it's you know two and a half percent, two and a half percent. But again, it's amazing, you know, they want four percent, and you get a good system. Questions. Is that down or Yeah. <laughs> it's a good way just to break it down to what you do need to be doing daily and, and weekly. Yeah, it takes us all this all that, like the little okay, stuff. Let's talk about the daily. Say, how many contacts do you, how many people do you need to talk to to get an appointment? A day? No. Just, just in general. I don't know what the stats general. are with all that. Just imagine if I put you in an open house, how many people would have to walk through that door for you to get an appointment? Hopefully one. <laughs> no, on average, on average. Yeah, I don't know. Ten. Ten. New agents should be somewhere around twenty to twenty-five. If you're an experienced agent, well, you're doing pretty good. You should be somewhere around ten, ten to fifteen. Okay. On average, someone walks in the door, you talk to them, you convert them to them. And say it takes two appointments. That means you actually meet with them, and you have to go and qualify them and all that stuff to actually get a real closed deal out of it. Right. Okay, so we're going to use conservative numbers. We're going to say, and if you have to talk to 15 people to get one appointment, but you actually have to talk to 30 people to get a closed deal. And you said you wanted 40. Mm -hmm. well, 40 closed deals. So 40 times 30 is how much? So 100 people a month? A month. That's not that bad. Divided by four weeks, 25 in a week, 
Divided divide by daily. Well, I should have divided it by five, maybe. It works out to about five, five contacts. Like five, five, like five. Yeah. five contacts a day. That's not bad. No. So say you call five people a day. Okay. Five people a day. And you did an open house every other week. You think you'd reach your goal? I'm sure it's just better. It's literally that simple. People try to overcomplicate this with social media and about uh, marketing. And stuff. It's really it's a numbers game. It's a great numbers game. How many contacts are you making per week? What do people do? Why did you do bold? You pay eight hundred dollars, and what do they say? What's the number one thing that makes you an action? Hundred contacts a week. Yeah. Right. You do hundred contacts a week, and boom, suddenly you have business bold. There's a reason. Right. <laughs> There's a reason they talk about a bunch of other stuff, but they hold you accountable to one thing because they know that's what actually makes the business happen. There's a reason. And when I break it down super easy, we're talking forty closes. Right. If you're averaging ten thousand. So you're talking 400,000, probably 300 net. A $300,000 business yeah. is five contacts a day. A 300,000 net business is five contacts a day. I think what was it based on my average? It's How like many people you drop on your doorstep average. every week, every month? It's a lot. 22,000 a month. 22,000 a month. Okay. And then you wonder why, then you wonder why he has over 100 transactions. What does it mean? He drops. He drops 22,000 flyers a month. Yeah, he don't want to do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was go, give, give me that. I'll give you a second. Yeah, exactly. So he doesn't even have to make contacts. He's making drops on people's doorstep, but it's translating into business, right? How much does that cost? Uh, not that much. Really? Yeah. No, well, they printed on the printer. No, well, I'll see. I mean, postcards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe about 2000 Okay. And that includes 1600 or mail, or there's a mail included in that. Who do you use to mail it? Uh, the printer also handles the mail. Yeah. That yeah. runs through It's four, four guys. Four guys. Yeah. Okay. Four guys. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's a bunch of printers. Nice. They'll, they'll print it. Express mail. copy does it? Yeah, they all, they all, there's a lot of printers. And then who does it for you? Myself, Taylor. Uh, I have I hire high school students who live in the community. Okay, I love that. And then do you just leave it or do you knock? I used to knock. Yeah. And, now I would just, and, just and nice. you still yeah, do when, the When Don talked about numbers, I was just a pure number. Okay. And, and I, I would have to talk to a certain amount of people every day. I think the reason you can draw now though. is because you knock for right. 20 exactly. years. Does that make sense? You can't, you can't, just start you can't drop and expect yeah. to have a great return. Exactly. You got to knock. So you do have to knock. And well, he established himself as a, yeah. as a, it's a farm. neighborhood expert. As a neighborhood yeah. expert. It's a farm. So now you got to get to know the people. People are like, oh, we know about him. Want to talk about farm? Well, My, I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't want to, but yes, I have to. <laughs> you don't have to. I have an assistant about 10 years ago. Her mom lived in South Elderly, she needed to go to this assisted living. So like, hey, you're gonna sell your house. And she goes, Mom, we're gonna sell your house and put some money over. And she goes, Mom said, Hey, uh, we're ready to sell your house now. We need your son's house. She's like, I can't sign this. I can't listen to this. This is his own daughter. His own daughter. Her own daughter. I can't listen to this. She goes, Why? She's like, You're not the agent for selling someone. Michael's the agent for selling someone. Oh, straight. Should have said that. That's shady. Straight up, straight up said it. And I was like, well, if Michael's going to listen, Michael's going to listen. He's like, no, I'm kidding. It took her like three weeks of talking to her mom. Wow. To get her to list with her. <laughs> Over Michael. And she, you know what she said? She said, no, I've talked to Michael regularly, and I've told him if I sold my home, I would sell it with him. Oh. Right. That's right. <clears throat> It's about talking to them. So if he was worried about contacts, right? When you're doing your walking, contacts per day. When is the best time to door knock? When you'll do it. Yeah, when you'll do it in the morning. morning. The morning on a weekday? Yeah. Really? That's the best. That's honestly like the best, like your energy. Really? Well, the rest of your day is nice stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really about them, it's really about you. Yeah. Once we're we, we get hot in the summer. The only time you're going to walk in the summer. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
the same when you have the most energy to do it because it's gonna suck. See, so. I kept thinking like, okay, I need to do this like more in the evening when people are home and they're not working. If they're working from home, maybe they actually are at home. Maybe they even had a cocktail. So, if I'm anything has shown this, I think you're overthinking this. Oh, I totally am. Just, just do the numbers. Just okay. do the numbers. <laughs> What's like appropriate? Like, you know, we're calling in, not be, you know, is it like 9 a.m.? Like, that's, I don't know. I don't want anybody to ever know anyway, about anymore. That's why I'm the neighborhood because a lot of people walk around. I know people who do physicals and expires when they call at 7. Just be like, damn. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Right 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 if you do fit, if you do physical and expires, you call at 7. Really? To tell me before they get busy. Yeah, because yeah. by 8, it's going to hit them all day long. I don't know. If some stranger was at my door at like 7 a.m., I'd be like, <laughs> nope. right? If you, wanted to sell, if you wanted to sell your house and the agent that just tried to sell your house sucked it, sucked it, lazy, didn't communicate, didn't market it well, and the day you cancel the listing, the next day an agent shows up at your door, says 7 a.m., says, here, ma'am, I can sell your okay, house. Yeah. So I can do it. Yes. Then you would be like, this is who I needed in the first place, right? Because you're going to be like, I want to sell my home. They suck. If this person got up at this early in the morning to come see me at my house, yeah. that's the agent I want, right? That's what you're going to say. In that circumstance, that absolutely makes sense, yes. You sent an email? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah like, to be. <laughs> like, this is everything my agent wasn't. And if you yeah. didn't have to tell them, you just show up, right? <laughs> All right. Super simple, right? Honestly, if you, if you just think, I'm going to do five contacts a day, 25 contacts a week, no matter what. No matter what. You're going to start on Monday, or you're going to do like 25 of them on one day. Well, then, if you don't do it each day, it's going to be a lot more. Well, you know, each day is not bad. You're, 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 not, you're not going to make it to five contacts a day. Yeah. If you're calling your sphere, right. it's probably five. you got to look at the quality. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it was always the quality and the quantity. So how many door knocking versus sphere? Sphere is five. Sphere is five. Door knocking, you can do 25 or 30 a day. Of the actual interaction, they of answer interaction. their door and you actually speak to them. Right. So is that 100 doors a day if you got it? 125? I did 50 and I had three people answer. Where were you? Um, over in Baker. On a Wednesday at 11 a.m. You were there at 8.30 or 9.00, you might have caught people on the way to work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And is that a youthful community or a very old community? I think it's more youthful if it's like younger families. But... <laughs> Everyone thinking? Glenn, what do you think? I'm ready to put this to you. So I was always talking about using like the, uh, the, uh, the number method, like 100 contacts, things of that sort, but I've never actually really done it. So now I'm actually looking forward to start using my own more. Stupid simple. Yeah, I don't don't complicate it. Say like time. Yeah. Don't worry about the time. Don't worry about the pick. Don't worry about how pretty the flyer is. Don't even worry. Oh about it. no, you have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't not. Michael, your flyer is a handwritten note on the bottom of a one one single page. It's column. not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, because Michael, Michael has done it. 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 Michael one sheet comp oh, sheet, comp, one yeah. single line comp sheet with a with a with, with a written note on the bottom and a postcard. Well, then you like alternate those things too. Well, I take out the things that you're leaving. <laughs> you drop anything that doesn't include the comps. No. It always includes the comps. Drop the value. Because it's not a. Drop the value. Okay. Teach you something. It's not about you. you yep. Take care of yeah. Yeah. It's about them. And what do they want? They want oh. information. Okay. They want comps. Okay. Now they don't want to know that you just sold a bunch of other homes. I mean, they do, but, but they want to know how it relates to them. How does it right. relate to them? Yeah. Exactly. What's in it for them? Okay. What's in it for me should always be your thought process. But well, what's in it for them? Yeah, you're always going to approach these things as what is, what's in it for me when it needs to be what's in it for What's the consistency you okay. use for like on the floor and drop off the people's floor? What's that? What's the consistency you use for like the make account, get the accounts created and drop off the people's floor? MLS. I use MLS. I use MLS. Yeah, I'm trying to just drop it off, just put it up in there, just drop it off. Yeah, yeah. Well, then he said he uses four guys for printing. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much four packs, MLS ones. MLS class was his right Thursday. Mm -hmm. Thursday afternoon. 
literally, you, you print out like 1,500 of them on my phone. Yeah, and you're doing that. That's what you do. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have a lot of the printer, and the copier right there. Our hospitality is amazing. You're making it too, you're making that portion of it too hard. Yeah. So literally, you go on MLS, whatever you're farming. And you choose that specific yeah. area on MLS and print out the homes that have, have sold or that are pending so they can see what it is. But here's the key is, he does it consistently. Right. Yeah, so that's he's doing it consistently. Every month it's out there. Every okay, month. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. So yeah, how often are you leaving the comps? So how new are they? What What is the... I run them the last two days of every month. Last two days of every month. Okay. And the new goes for the following month. Things fit this one. That's a system. See? Like that. We talk business, right? We talk business, that's a system. Right? How am I gonna do my comps? How am I gonna walk door to door for my open houses? How many doors am I gonna hit? What am I gonna give them? <laughs> On the 15th, postcard has to be approved. It needs to be printed and delivered. Oh, that's not printed. You use an app for your door knocking as well? You know where you've been, or you just this every house. <laughs> you've been doing this for 20 years. You, you know what it is. You don't have to keep track of who's knocked your door, whatever. Okay. So it's consistency over time. I tell you this: the only reason I tell you all this is hope that you be consistent over time. That's really the key. So I said three to five years into it, because imagine you did this one year. Next year you made that 10. Next year you made that. Next year you made that 20. What would your world look like? Would you be a millionaire? Oh. You'd be in a better You'd be in a best better place than you are now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know five translated into about what? 300,000 net, right? Another five is going to translate into 600. Another five is going to translate to 900. So add five on to get another extra three hundred thousand. All right, I kept you guys longer than I should. No, I love it. Down and dirty. Thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, if you want copies of the docs, that'll I'll let PDF yes. wise talk to Sam up front. She can give you the docs. Can you send Sam the PDF? We need a PDF. Do you have it as a PDF, or do you want to have it as a? I have it as a script. As a Excel script. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not pretty mindful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. I think you could do that. No. Because you went way too fast in my brain. You didn't catch up. That's it's not working right now. No, I recommend if you need to spend some time on this, especially the big Y part. You need to get really clear. Oh, I've got yeah, that. Yeah, but if you need to work it out, just. You know, get your favorite drink, get non-distracted place, and sit down and just think about it, right? Just go over the numbers, you'll know, right? And if you're worried about your numbers and you have been here more than a year, you can go to reports and get your trends for the year. Yeah. 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 Buyers you work with, they become sellers later too. Well, I, well, yeah, I know. It's, it's yeah. a, it's a it's cycle. Cycle. Actually, I, I think um, 2022 is going to be the year of the buyers because rates I think are still going to be low. We have a ton of offers out right now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, and 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 it's going to be much easier because more listings are coming on now. I think it's going to be much easier to get contracts. So I think we're going to see uh, where well. where someone can do buyer heavy and very good. I'm my little son. And you should have accountability groups. Yeah. Say that again, Michael. Accountability groups. 